We are back here in the PvP Live Studios for HPL. This is Nathan Zamora, that's admirable. I'm Tanner Grace, and guess what? We're going into game three here between Jab and Zelay, and Jab is up two nothing. A little surprising in some ways, but the way he's been playing lately, I don't know if it's in, if it surprises him. Yeah, I mean the way he's been playing, it's not really that big of a surprise. He's been absolutely mixing it up great, and Zelay coming with these aggressive strategies. That's sort of what you expect him to do. Jab has had the right answers at the right time, but that's the important part: is that Hearthstone is a game of percentages. When your opponents don't have those answers, they're gonna fall to that pressure. Yeah. And you know what? We're going to see who falls to wh who's aggression here in game three between Jab and Zelay. Yeah, I think both of them, this is a great spot for both of them to swap over to fatigue decks and really drag these games out to 20 turns. <laughs> I think we've seen enough of that for the, for the week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got a little bit of client here uh, with, with Jab. We'll get his perspective up as soon as we can. But Hunter for, for both of them. But you know what? Zelay's hand, uh, I have to believe that in these Hunter mirrors, he's, he's favored in these spots. I mean, Jab continues to play mid-range strategies. If they can stabilize the board position early, they'll go out to an early lead. Yeah. But and you got an early, you got an Iron Beak Owl in Jab's opening hand. This is one of the best minions to have early against Hunter. When you can silence an early Haunted Creeper or an early Mad Scientist, it is huge against them. Yeah, and Freezing Trap's even going to check the Leopard Gnome. So once again, Jab with the right tools to stifle the pressure coming in. But is Zelay going to be able to continue to push through for damage, or is it going to fall to Jab? He's playing Ooh. Hybrid Hunter here, too. Yeah, he I may like have this. been playing this in game one. We didn't see a Savannah High main. Uh, but I would suspect that he's kind of swapped over to this strategy, knowing that Jab has the potential Absolutely. to play lots of early game answers. So when he goes into turn six, rather than just relying on pure damage, he has a major threat to stick to the board after Jab's already used everything. Yeah, and we're seeing Jab use the Iron Big Owl, like we said, here to take care of the Mad Scientist. It's just a terrible feeling. Oh, jeez. That was, a, that was a, a pretty big one. This we could get a good could juggle here. get ugly. Yeah, now I love Zelay having Sav uh, Savannah High Main in his deck. It's like you said, he knows he's playing against Jab. He knows Jab's going mid range and big on him, so he's going to want to do some of the same things himself to help battle that. Yeah, I mean, something that's really interesting here, though, is how much repetitive damage this Mad Scientist is actually worth. If he thinks he can get enough out of it, the Eagle Horn Bow is a great investment in this spot. But if he thinks that he can't get enough damage out of it, this 50 50 chance to pick off the Iron Beak Owl could send him smooth sailing to an easy victory here. Yeah, you got to see Jab's hand is actually not the best besides the Unleashed Hounds. He has nothing to really do early. He's going to go for it. And you know what? I like this play too. 50, even, 50. even in the event that he fails, he still has got an early pressure on the board so he can continue to have the damage rolling here. But Jab, once again, picks up some cards that can help him keep this board under control and unleash the Hounds. That's going to help really keep things under control. Even going to use the Hunter's Mark here straight away just to make sure that this Knife Juggler's checked. Yeah, you got to believe that Jab believes that Zelay is playing a very aggressive face Hunter build and just wants to get out to his, it, you just keep his life total as high as possible early and try to get an early board advantage. Second Savannah High made picked up for Zelay. This is a disaster at this point now. Leopardum's checked by the 1-1 uh, one -one Hound in play, and I can tell you he does not want to use Eagle Horn Bow on a 1-1 one -one to protect a Leopard Gnome. Yeah, and just Eagle Horn Bow, deal three, pass here. Isn't the greatest turn four ever either, but to, it's, it has to. That, I think that's the only option he really has. I, I don't. I think. I mean, he could also just hear a power. He could just play the leper gnome. Uh, you know, he does have two Savannah High Means in his hand, so if those go unchecked, he still could have a good position to win here. But with the way his hand's constructed, and I think with what he expects to draw, he just wants to get the damage out of the way. And look at that, taking out this 1 1 dog to prevent stuff like Kill Command in the future. Yeah, decent. Pretty good draw here, Jab, giving him something to play this turn. I was going to say, summon oh random Huffer is going to be a good one. This one's going to get in. Probably at least eight damage in some yeah, way, shape, or form. You know, this actually isn't even the best one that could have happened here in this spot because it does get checked by the Eagle Horn Bow. And I would venture to say that against what Zelay is doing, he just wants more resilience that's on the board. You know, he needs to scale into this turn six. His turn five has no action so far other than the quick shot. And the quick shot could potentially backfire in this spot. He picks up explosive trap, so able to make sure that he can, you know, maybe deal with future minions that are coming out here. But Zelay is going into a Savannah oh, High wow. turn, picks up an Armorsmith here. I think that Jab's kind of happy to see that one. Uh, you know, one point of damage isn't that much, but here is where Zelay is going to get the ball rolling. He's going to get two Savannah High Mains on the board before Jab gets an attack out of one of them. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting next couple of turns. You're going to see Savannah High Mains from both players, then a second Savannah High Main from Zelay, followed up by a Doctor Boom from Jab. Yeah, the problem is that Jab's already used his this game's Iron about to speed up so he's fast. He's already used his Iron Beak out in this spot, so he doesn't have a way to check these two Savannah High Mains. So he's getting in seven points of damage here and then backing it up with a second one. That's one of those spots that's almost undefeatable. Like, that's why this deck is so powerful. When you have these early threats that your opponent has to invest in and you follow it up with a minion that's powerful, it's, it's so difficult to check. 
Yeah, I mean, th this situation looks terrible for Jab. As you said, there's going to be two Savannah high mains on Zalay side, unless he gets a little fancy this turn before Jab gets to attack with the first one. Yeah, I kind of consider all of his options, though. I mean, maybe it's not the best play to play Savannah high main. I have to believe it is. But something else he's got to think about here is how Houndmaster potentially affects this board. If he thinks that's going to be a disaster that strikes, I mean, maybe he does invest into trading Savannah high mains here. He does have a second one to back it up. Yeah, that is something to think about. You know Jab loves uh, Houndmasters and usually plays them in all of his Hunter builds, and we saw two in his opening hand that got mulliganed away. So that's actually a pretty big top deck here, uh, potential for Jab as well. Yeah, second Savannah high main is, I, I think that's the no-brainer. It's a matter of whether or not trading to play around. No, nope, but we're going upstairs. It. Yeah, I don't can't blame him for that either. I mean, just so much pressure coming out, and Jab has no way to handle what's happening on this board. I mean, he can run in a Savannah high main to trade and then play Explosive Trap behind that to check that four points of damage. But again, the second Savannah high main, just too much pressure for him. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if he actually plays the Dr. Boom here and thinks that he has a chance of not dying next turn. That's the problem. Facing down 13, I'm sorry, 15 damage from uh, from what you have on the other side of the board is <laughs> pretty easy to die in that sort of situation. And he knows yeah. that Zalai has Leopardum too. So not only would he have to not die, but he would also have to, uh, you know, have Zalai not be able to check anything that he's doing. And that's uh, probably the most unlikely scenario yeah. possible. Savannah High Main's just too much this game. Yeah, there's gonna be too much. Like, there's almost nothing you can do. Explosive Trap has no way of getting him out of it. He can just play the Leopardum before attacking. And when it triggers the explosive trap, it's actually going to be enough to kill him with, uh, coupled with any of the weapons. I mean, there's a there's a bunch of ways Zalay can actually kill yeah, him. Jab's just going to have to initiate the race here, but it's not going to be enough. Zalay has got more than enough damage in his hand to end this one, and he's sending this to game four. Mm -hmm. And Zalay is going to get on the board here in this match, going to go up to game four. I mean, we're going to go into game four with Jab up two to one on Zalay, but Zalay, you know, getting on the board. We've seen a reverse sweep already in, here in HBL. It's not out of the question for someone to get three in a row after being down 0-2. Yeah, even just plays the kill command from the right side of his hand and, uh, you know, maybe Jab is affected a little bit by the, oh, maybe he top decked the damage on me. I don't think it's going to affect Jab though. He doesn't seem like a player who's very susceptible to tilting. Yeah, he's seen, he seemed very calm, cool, and collected in all of his games so far here at HBL, especially here in the last week. He seems like a completely different player. Yeah, Zalay really turning up the heat here, too. I love the fact, I mean, this is what these aggressive decks are designed to do, is get on the board early, and if your opponent answers all those threats, have something big to follow it up, or have damage to follow it up. One of those two situations. So, to see him win a game with that same strategy, I mean, that's what this deck will do. The percentages are what he's playing in this match. Yeah, the percentages are what he's playing in this match. We're going to see what he plays here in game four. We come back. Guys, get out there on Twitter. Use the hashtag HPL. Let us know what you want to. What you know, let us know what you think you're going to see this match. What are they going to change? Are they going to keep saying aggressive, or are they going to keep going mid range? Uh, you're watching Hearthstone on PVP Live.